superjet with Russian-made PD-8 engines is ready and the first flight is coming soon. But first, let's list the most interesting events that took place in our country during the week. So, a new serial frigate of Project 22350, Admiral Golovko, entered the Northern Fleet. It made an inter-fleet crossing from St. Petersburg to Severomorsk. The Project 22,350 ships have a displacement of about 5,000 tons with a length of 135 meters and a beam of 16 meters are designed to operate in the far seas and oceanic zones. Efremov NIIFA specialists have successfully completed a multi-year cycle of manufacturing and testing of a full-scale prototype of a highly loaded panel of the first wall of the vacuum chamber of the first wall of the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor ITER. The last step was to measure the geometric parameters of the prototype. The supply agreement involves the manufacture and delivery of 179 such panels. Southern Heavy Machine Tool Building Plant has launched in Krasnodar the production of new models of high-tech five-axis machining centers for high-precision machining of metal workpieces. The modernization will make it possible to double the output of machining centers. Southern Heavy Machine Tool Building Plant plans to take up to 50% of the domestic market of five-axis machining centers and up to 7% of the Russian machine tool market as a whole. The Research Institute of Precision Instruments created the Digital Earth Information System with the aim of forming a constantly updated single continuous multistable dynamic coverage of the territory of the Russian Federation with remote sensing data and providing consumers with access to remote sensing data, products and services. Automatic generation of high precision or mosaics became possible thanks to the creation complex of Ni TPJSC. The Baikal Amur mainline received the first import substituted three TE-28 freight diesel locomotives. Seven three-section locomotives are already transporting freight on the Novaya Chara Tinda sections. Diesel locomotives are designed to drive heavy trains weighing up to 7,100 tons in difficult climates. The best technical solutions make it possible to extend service intervals and increase the reliability of control components. Kalashnikov has fully fulfilled its obligations to supply 25,000 sets of Strelok combat equipment. Shooter is a comprehensive solution in the field of individual armor protection and equipment and includes an armored vest, corset plus, with additional protection modules, a set of sub bags, a backpack with a volume of 30 liters. Armor elements have an increased level of anti shrapnel resistance. The newest drill, planning aerial bomb, has successfully passed all tests. Drill, as designed to destroy armored vehicles, ground-based radar stations, power plant control points and anti-aircraft missile systems. The first production batch is scheduled to be manufactured in 2024. Luke Oil put into trial production the Yukon Yuginskoy field in Hanti Mansisk Autonomous District. The field is located in Nizhnevartosk District, 30 kilometers from the town of Pokachi. In the plan to develop two well pads for drilling 14 wells. Volgograd region has completed the creation of one of the largest mega farms in Russia. Production will be able to give up to 40,000 tons of milk per year. Upon completion of the project, the number of cattle at this enterprise will reach 11,000, now it is 9,000. Directly for the young production will work 4,000 dairy cows. A full cycle facility for the creation of composite fuels was created by scientists of Tomsk Polytechnic University. It allows waste to be converted into fuel with a potential value of 2.5 rubles per 1 kilogram. The capacity of the complex is 63 kilowatts. This is enough to heat a production room of about 500 square meters. Well, now let's move on to the superjet, which will now fly with our Russian PD-8 engines. First flight is coming up. Remember how patriots scolded our authorities for the fact that we decided to implement a joint project with the West to build a Suhoi Superjet 100 short-haul airplane? rather than preferring to manufacture our own TU-334 airliner entirely? Yes, they were understandable. They supported our aircraft industry with their hearts, and they wanted Russia to retain full competence in the production of airplanes and to be able to produce them independently. But we were also happy that Russia was able to design, build and start serial production of a new civilian airplane at all. Albeit in cooperation with the West, all the more so because, in parallel, we continued production of long-range wide-body IL-96-300 and medium-range narrow-body to 204-214 airplanes. IL-76MD-90A military transport aircraft, and soon began work on the development of the innovative Mississippi-21 medium-range narrow-body airplane. After 12 years of its production and operation, we can state with good reason that everything was not done in vain. 
The Suhoi SUPERJET-100 was a success. The work on its perfection did not stop for a minute. The system of after-sales service was developed. The liner's childhood illnesses were being addressed, and it didn't have any adults. During 12 years of operation, there was only one serious flight accident resulting in human casualties, but it was due to human error, not the fault of the airplane. A total of 232 Superjet 100s were produced before foreign component supplies were discontinued. And Western sanctions imposed in 2022 aimed at grounding Russia, leaving us without the airplanes themselves, have had the exact opposite result. They spurred us on to active import substitution, i.e. led to the restoration of lost and acquisition of new competencies in aircraft construction, increased the number of high-tech jobs in Russia, reduced the cost of purchasing imported components, increased tax collection due to the expansion of production facilities and inspired new life in Superjet. We will have to produce significantly more of them to replace the fleet of foreign aircraft, and now it will be a completely domestic aircraft. For the year 2023, airliners of this type have reached record flying hours. Individual machines spent up to 14 hours a day in the sky, 190 new routes were open. A couple of weeks ago, Rosaviatsia approved changes to the liner of the Russian Superjet 100 aircraft. Its airframe has been modified to install Russian systems and units instead of imported ones, which will make it possible to start serial production and deliver the first short-haul airliners into service in 2024. Subtitle editor A. Semkin corrector A. Igorova now at the plant in Komsomolska on Amur in various degrees of readiness as 22 liners. Serial production will begin from this year and it is expected to produce at least 20 aircraft per year. In total, about 40 foreign-made systems and units were imported in the Superjet. For example, avionics, landing gear, auxiliary power plant, integrated control system, power supply, air conditioning, fire protection and more. But its highlight, as you understand, was the import substituted Russian engine PD-8, created in extremely short time, which will be installed on the aircraft to replace the Russian-French engine SAM-146. Here's what was written about this engine on the unfriendly Wikipedia. According to the materials, the technical design of the engine should be made in 2021. In 2022, the working design documentation. For 2023, technological preparation of production of prototypes of marching propulsion systems is planned. In 2024, prototypes of the MSU with PD-8 should be produced. A type certificate for the new engine is expected to be issued later this year. That is, it was originally planned that only in 2024 the first prototype would be produced. However, our designers and engineers have shown our Western partners how to put it mildly, so as not to get a warning for hate speech. Okay, let's not get specific about what they showed, let's just say that the engine was not just assembled, but already installed on an airplane in 2023. But more on that in a bit. In the meantime, we would like to remind you that an airplane with Russian equipment has already made its first flight in August 2023. However, it was fitted with SAM-146 engines. This was done in order to speed up testing and certification of import substituted units. Well, the moment is finally approaching when the Superjet will take off with domestic engines already installed on it. The airplane is getting ready for its maiden flight. However, there is a little nuance here, and here's what it is. Now the Russian engines are installed on the airplane with foreign stuffing. This was done for two reasons. In order to independently check the operation of domestic systems and to test the option of remotorization of already built and flying Superjet 100 aircraft to domestic engines. Because 146 engines don't last forever. And we should not expect that France will ever come to its senses and continue to supply us with the gas generators of this engine, as well as spare parts to prolong the operation of these engines. And in any case, it is much more profitable for us not to buy foreign goods, but to produce more of our own. It is also planned to gradually replace other imported units and components, which will also fail on already built airplanes, with newly created domestic ones. The third airplane will be fully import substituted, with Russian stuffing and Russian engines. It is also already assembled and is just waiting for the engines to be installed. On that optimistic note, we'll end on that. We are waiting for the first flight of an airplane with domestic engines.